my dear friends in Christ, I have the pleasure tonight to introduce to us Reverend Father Anthony Mother. God bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight, our reflection will be on the caption, Don't Look Back. It will be from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. Let us pray. Loving Father, I, your worthy servant, is standing before your Holy of Holies to thank you for this wonderful day. Every day is a blessing for us, for better, for worse. Every day is a divine blessing for us because you have counted us to be in the land of the living, in spite of our worthiness. Many of us are struggling with their faith in you. Many have been suffering in their families, battling with their mortgage crisis, battling with their own citizenship. Some don't even have a work permit. Some don't even have green card. Many people don't even have a job. Some do not even know what tomorrow will be. Oh, Father, I pray that you visit such people tonight to assure them that there is hope. Many people have denounced Satan Many people have denounced evil ways of life, evil money, bad ways of making money. And they are still struggling to survive since they followed you. Some people were asking, is it because I'm a Christian that he or she is still suffering? Some people wanted to go back to their bad ways. Devil is a liar. I command that devil to God from your thoughts in Jesus' name. I pray that the good Lord will filter your negative thoughts and empower you with the spiritual synergy that will hold you on, that will hold you on, that will spur you on to wait on the Lord. You will not die in Charlene. I bless you with Psalm 118. I'm talking to you tonight. This message is for you. Don't resist it. Don't resist it. I'm talking to you tonight. Don't resist. Don't go back. Don't go back to your evil ways. I'm talking to you, child of God. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Oh, child of God. Take in deep breath and breathe out. I'm talking to you. I'm ministering to your family tonight. God has remembered you. God has remembered you tonight. Don't go back to that evil ways. Don't go back to that evil ways. Don't go to back to that evil ways. Devil is a liar. Taking the blood and breathe out. There is hope. There is a way out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Listen to this voice tonight. Don't go back, child of God. Don't lose hope, child of God. That you are alive and you survive till today is by the grace of God. And if you have the grace of God, you will not you will not be disgraced by the children of the world. And so, Father, I raise my hands of Elijah upon my people today to bless them as Elijah blessed the children of the old. I'm blessing them with the the hands of the twelve apostles tonight. That as we are waiting the glossolalia, the descent of the Holy Spirit, that the Lord will continue to present before his own people that spirit of God that will sustain them in time of need. I'm praying that they will not go back to their past life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Tonight is another day that we shall draw strength from the Lord. Because the Lord is our strength. The Lord is our maker. The Lord is our King of kings and Lord of lords. We are the children of the King. We are the children of the Messiah. Father Lord, I minister to your children tonight that they will be able to draw strength from you, God. That they will be able to know that there is blessed assurance waiting for them. That they will know that they have a living God. The God that spoke and the mountains were made. The God that spoke and the hills were established. The God that spoke and the oceans and rivers were established. Oh, Father, may your children recognize your awesomeness and how powerful you are. Sometimes they don't understand it. Some do, but because of human weakness, they cannot even understand why they have the same God that did all these things, and they are suffering. Father, this is the moment of crisis for many people. Crisis of faith, economic crisis, economic warfare, economic hardship. Father, Lord, I pray that you reassure them of your divine presence. Many have been attacked by the enemy. Many have been followed around by your known spirits, brother. And they knock at my door and I knock at your door. We are knocking at your door in prayer that tonight your children will be reassured of your divine presence so that you, my God, will continue to lead your people. When we are led by the Lord, the evil spirits run away. When we are led by the Spirit of God, the evil spirits will never come into our camp. May tonight be another day of divine blessing for you and for me. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 62, which we are reflecting upon tonight, says, No one who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Listen very carefully. No one who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back his feet for the kingdom of God. Think about this assertion from Jesus Christ. Jesus is trying to create an awareness to us about our lifestyle, about the treasures of this world. No matter how we are pressurized, no matter how we are pressurized by the crisis of the moment, remember the stations of the cross. No matter how we see our children suffer, no matter how we see our siblings going through a lot, Remember that our mother Mary saw her only son going through all the stations of the cross for her papers. All we have to ask ourselves tonight is, what is God telling me in this situation? There was a family that they were, they, they were in crisis for many years. They have been booking Marina Masses through me. And I have been establishing peace relationship with them. But it took, it took them time to reunite. What happened? One of the assistants that used to champion this, this uh, peace talk for sick. She was battling with cancer. She fell sick. All this while, this young lady was healthy. The, two, the, the siblings were in tapsy They never wanted peace to rest. I don't know how God operates. The one that was righteous and upright 
and was trying to bring the family together for a sake. And guess what happened? That was the time they were able to come back together. Oh, sister, we love you. Oh, sister, everybody started talking to one another. And the sister understood what was going on and what God wanted to use her to do in that family. And she was the one smiling and comforting them. And they did not understand why the sister that was suffering from cancer was smiling and was the happiest. Why? Because for the first time, this young lady was able to see her siblings talk to each other. She was saying, oh Lord, I thank you. Even if she dies tomorrow, that the Lord has answered her prayer while she was still alive. Why will you wait for your sister to die before you listen to the wisdom of God? Why will you allow your brother to die before you attend to peace in your family? Why will you allow your parents to die before you uh, accept their, 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 their peace talk? Don't go back to your tit for tat. Don't go back to your anger. Be angry with everybody. Don't go back to your obstinacy. You are not a recalcitrant child. You are a blessed child of God. You are not an orphan. You are a blessed child of God. Don't waste your energy. Planning against your siblings. Don't waste your energy. Planning against your parents. What type of gift will you give to your daddy and your mommy when they are still alive? You forget the nine months your mom carried you. You forget the nine months your beloved mom carried you. Are you able to raise your voice against your mom? My mom is on this line, listening to this prayer. My father died in 2013. And I'm the first son. That I'm a priest does not make me, not to look to my family and pray for them and, and give them instruction. I am not their father. I'm just giving you an example. What will you tell God when you are given certain positions in, among your siblings, will you be remembering the, the evil deeds, or, or let me put it this way, maybe they have offended you and they ask for forgiveness. And deep inside their hearts, you see that they are forgiven, but you are still bearing grudges. You are still feeling the pain of what they did to you. For how long will you carry this overload? It's an excess luggage. Let go of the past and embrace the present. Don't go back for tit for tat. I know it's very painful. On behalf of your siblings, I ask for your forgiveness. If they cannot say, I am sorry to you, on behalf of them, in the name of God, I am saying, I am sorry. Take a deep breath and breathe out. You want them to tell you, I am sorry. Remember that it is God that can bless you more. If you are waiting for human beings, sometimes you may not get it. Look unto Christ. Look unto God. God is the ultimate purpose. God is the ultimate purpose of our life. He is the ready listener to our every conversation. God will see you through. In spite of what you are going through, remember that God is with you. Remember that God is with you. Not for a while for a prayer. Pause 
for the wife for prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end of life. You are the one that brings peace. You are the one that restores peace and harmony among siblings and friends. You are the one that came to rescue us from eternal damnation. I stretch out my blessed hands upon many of my brothers and sisters that cannot resist the, the pain of the past. They are still bearing the burden of the past. Release your spiritual strength and blessing upon them. Release your spiritual healing upon them. Release that spiritual synergy of healing upon them. In the name of Jesus. I pray that tonight they will be able to take a deep breath and breathe out. And be able to say, Mama, Papa, there will be peace in this house before anybody dies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be peace in your family. You are in this world by the grace of God. Not by your own power of might. Do not go back. Do not go back to the evil ways. What will it profit us that we have denounced Satan and we go and knock at the door of Satan? When you hear the, the chant of forward ever, backward never. What do you think? One may not understand the full meaning of this. The deeper implications and consequences of looking back has spiritual undertone. Not looking back may imply don't need to look back to the things that will not help you to heal. I repeat. Not looking back may imply don't look back to things that will not help you to heal. Some people still grieve for what somebody did to them. Sometimes you open an old wound that will not help you to heal. That's what I'm referring to. But go back to those things. If you don't, if you know, that opening the old wound of the past will not help you to forgive in the present. Don't open that wound. But keep opening that wound will help you to grieve and to forgive and to make peace. Go back to that. That is the examination of conscience. That's a healthy going back. But the going, not going back I mean today is going back to your evil ways of tit for tat. Not the one that helps you to examine your conscience. And so tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, things that will deter you from forgiving one another, run away from that. Things that will not stop you from gossiping, keeping malice, be angry with your brother or sister or your husband or wife. Being hardened, being impatient, being jealous, and being, being angry with anybody. Avoid it. Run away from that. Don't go back to those, those ways. Why will you be keeping malice for long? Don't go back. No cold war in your house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Why will you see your wife? Why will you see your husband? And and you not talk. Days will pass. Weeks will pass. Months will pass. Years will pass. And you are given the opportunity. Remember First Peter chapter five. 
from verse 8 to 10, it says, Be calm, but be vigilant, because your enemy, the devil, is proud of like a roaring lion. Roaring lion. Roaring lion. Like a roaring lion. He's not a lion, but he roars like a lion. The devil is very crafty, looking for someone to devour. And not to him strongly say, don't allow the devil to come into your relationship. Don't allow the devil to use you. Do not go back to your cold war. Even though the weather is cold, come out. Put heat in your house. Pray. And the Spirit of God will, 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 will bring that spiritual heat inside the house. That will calm down. Your hot temper, your heart in yes. But the Spirit of God will heal your wounds, will heal your wounded heart, and massage you in such a way that you will not feel the pain of the past. You may commit suicide, my dear brothers and sisters. And do not commit murder. There are certain things you say. That person will feel like he or she is dead already. Watch your tongue. Watch what you tell your brother or your sister when you are angry. Do not go back to your evil ways. When you are vomiting venom, it's like a stinging scorpion. Don't do that to your brother. Don't do that to your sister. If you kill your brother or your sister, remember what the Bible says. If you call your brother or sister any day, you answer for it in the kingdom of God. How can you kill somebody that you go for the funeral? How will you be when your brother or sister is going to the ground? Who will you fight again with? You will be, God, God keeps such people alive. So that those people will be tormented and tortured for life. Some people say, why, why, why does God just leave the, the wicked people to live, live a life? That's the, that the worst punishment you can give to a wicked man. To so keep him or her alive. So that he will be going through emotional and psychological torture. He or she will be remembering what he or she did. In front of the people. The person will be bragging that deep inside him or her, that person is dying. And God will not allow that person to die. Why will you be punishing your brothers and sisters? For no just cause. Why will you be blackmailing your brothers and sisters? Just for money. Why will you punish the image of certain families? Just to punish somebody for no just cause. Don't do that. God is watching us. God is listening to you. Remember Proverbs 6 from the 16 following? The 6 sees, sees God at all. 7 are there. How the eyes and so on. How is the shedding of some blood? Feed the quarry to plan over what we did at night and so on. Be very careful. Don't go back. Don't make your brother or sister cry or shed blood. Today is another beginning. Take a deep breath. Don't go back. Why must you plan evils with other people to hurt your brother or your sister? My greatest surprise that was that someone plotted for, for the brother to be kidnapped and he told the brother of the kidnapper, don't kill him, but just kidnap him. And get money from him. Why would something somebody do that out of them? And the kidnappers did what what he he, he said. But along the line, they shot the brother. It was in the hospital. He didn't even know where he was saying certain things. He was confessing openly. I did not tell these people to kill my brother. I did. Then the elder said, "Huh? 
What I said, no, I didn't say, oh, 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 you are the one that killed your brother. That was how people knew. I'll not tell you where it happened. But let me tell you something. You can't hide for long. You can't hide for long. God is watching you. God is listening to you. You may plan in the night. Remember that God that created the night. Darkness is not dark for God. You may plan and close your doors and windows. Remember, the air that we breathe comes from God. And if you are breathing in the air, remember that even when Jesus rose from the dead, he was able to come into the closed doors. We cannot hide away from God. It is better you stop planning against your brothers and sisters. They did not do anything to you. Whatever you are doing to the list of my brothers and sisters, that you do unto me. Many people would like to follow Jesus, but they are distracted. Jesus is creating awareness in this gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 52. For us not to be over worried, for us to keep away from distractions from this life, distractions from ourselves, distractions from family problems. Cost of being a disciple is not easy. If you listen to my message about so basic fear, you'll be able to understand that when you're following Christ, some people are afraid. That's what I call so basic fear. You want to be the disciple of God, but at the same time, you are afraid. And that's, that, yeah, that's, the, that's the place where you find solution. But today, I'm talking about never go back. Don't go back to your old way of life. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 57, it says, As they were walking along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Listen carefully. Gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Jesus was walking along the road. What if Jesus walks along the road where you are parking? I'm telling you what you are thinking. You'll be wild. But does it change the way you you live and who you are? Think about it. Jesus was walking along the way. Someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Verse 58 says, Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Look at Jesus. He's talking about detachment. Many people are crying because of the land in the village. Anything that will Take your life away from this earth. Follow just God. Don't go back. It is part of don't go back, my dear brothers. I'm not saying that you will not uh, fight for your right. If you want to fight, fight for your right. Fight. But remember our forefathers. They brought those lands for us. Where are they today? I always encourage siblings and the relations and neighbors. If someone is so desperate for your land, for Christ's sake, if you can enjoy it, enjoy it. That land is hard. Don't allow that land to shed blood. What I'm telling you, I told my brother. He was able to take get that advice and had, had his own family somewhere. You know, when the enemy looks at you, sometimes they may come with land that they are looking for your life. Read the handwriting on the wall. 
mais même elle était encore passée. Look at the handwriting on the wall and know when to back off. Know when God is giving you signals and messages. God will not come down. We have a symbol of God. We have a symbolic God that talks to, talk to us through signs and wonders. God can speak to you through a vision, through your dream. God can speak to you through your phone, through your relations. God can talk to you through the intercessors. That, will you be able to perceive what God is trying to let you know? Don't hold firm to things that will pass away. Look at Jesus that created the whole world. He was telling this young man that wanted to be his disciple, foxes have their days, and birds of the air have their nests. But the son of man had no place to lay his head. You can imagine a wealthy Jesus that told us that everything in heaven and earth belongs to him. Telling us that the son of man has no place to lay his head. And look at we ourselves. Unfortunately, we have mansions in the village. And look at us. How many days, how many times do we go to our countries? How many times do we go to our country? How many times do you visit those places you have, you have built houses inside? If you have two shoes, you can only wear a pair. If you have thousands of dresses, you can only wear one. You change to other ones. You must only wear one. Either too much or either way. You know how you compare it. But what I'm trying to drive at, you cannot wear the whole clothing you have in your wardrobe. You cannot wear the whole shoes you have in your wardrobe. If you have two cars, five cars, you can only drive one at a time. You know, why are you trying to kill yourself? Read the handwriting on the wall. And detach yourself from certain things. When Jesus spoke in Gospel of, of, in Gospel of Luke chapter 9 from verse 58, when he says, the birds of the air have their nest. You look at your, 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 your belongings. This brings out the simplicity of Jesus' mission. He did not come to the world to acquire material wealth but to teach us how to renounce ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow him. Not everything matters on earth. If there is fire in the house, only very few things that you, you, you take along with you. Gospel of Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. We have to renounce ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow each and every one of us has his or her own cross. Our cross is varied because our faces are different ones. The worldly people are very wicked. The worldly people are wicked. And they are also weak in the spread of the gospel. People give flimsy, flimsy excuses when they want to follow Jesus. Jesus was calling them, inviting people. Some people were given excuses. Sometimes some, some, somebody said, I will follow you, Jesus, but first let me go and bury my father. Look at that. This young man thought that when he tells Jesus that his father died, that Jesus will sympathize with him and say, oh, okay, go and bury your father. He told him, let the dead bury the dead. Which implies that he knows about the dead. And the dead will come, the source of the dead will come to him, Jesus, because he is the resurrection of life. There is nothing wrong in one burying one's father after which he can join Jesus. 
But Jesus was trying to tell this man that he knew what happened. That he need not worry about the dead, but to worry about his own self. And so, now he's still alive. Let the dead bury their own dead. Sounds like everyone has to answer for his or her own life. The dead person has to answer before God. And Jesus is the one that will take care of the dead when the time comes. For him is the resurrection. Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. Jesus, in, in trying to invite people to follow him, has thought of something. That if we are set to follow him, that we must not have any excuse. Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 52, gave a divine injunction. No one, without exception, is permitted to sin or falter. No one, no one, no one who puts his hand to the floor and then looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Permit me to make use of this strong example. I'm asking for your permission. If you go to the restroom or toilet, you would like to take back what you have deposited in the toilet or in the water system. After going to the restroom, you have a sigh of relief. And you continue your journey or your daily activity. So why will you Go back to the certain. Why will you go back to certain that you have denounced during your baptismal session? And still go back to certain for friendship. If you must not take back what you have deposited in the toilet, why will you go back to the devil that you have renounced and denounced? Jesus is talking to us tonight. Don't go back to that devil. Don't go back to that weakness of you. Don't go back to that weakness of you. Gospel of Matthew chapter 12, from verse 44 to 45, is talking to us today. Our relationship with God is like the vow of ordination for priests. Vows of obedience, and chastity for the nuns, vow of fidelity and love, for better for once for the married couples, in sickness and in health for them. Going back is like a pagan that was converted. After some time, after some time, he or she went back to the shrine to soil himself or herself. Look at that. We may not be happy if our child promises us to be of good behavior. And within a day or two, he or she goes back to commit the same crime that you warn him or her about. Simple instruction was given to Lot and the family, for instance, in the book of Genesis, chapter 19, the Genesis, during the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. God said to Lot and the family, don't look back. Lot's wife could not resist the feeling of lucre. Lot's wife could not resist the scene of lucre. She looked back. She wanted to see how the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah would look like. And she was destroyed by the wrath of God. Our God is a jealous God. When the doctors, for instance, give you instruction about your health, it is for your own good. Listen to the doctors and nurses. Listen to your inner self. If you love your, your family, you have to listen to yourself. Even your body will tell you, I'm resisting the thing you are giving me. Listen to your doctor. Remember your beloved ones. 
Don't go back to what is killing your health. Don't go back, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't go back to that stuff. You know what I'm talking about. You know what is eating you up. You remember your family. Remember your good friends. Remember yourself. Don't punish yourself. Don't do things that you will regret when you are when you are in, in, on your sick bed. People may visit you with flowers, but they will go, and you'll be alone with that sickness. Think about all this. Will you still go back to your evil ways? Will you still go back to your weakness? For Christ's sake, don't go back to your old ways of life. If a sinner repents, he receives God's blessing. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21, gave us sigh of relief. This is very carefully tonight. Many people are worried. Oh, Father, look at what my child is doing. Will the punishment come to me? I say no. Some people say, oh, Father, look at what my dad and my parents are doing. Would their punishment come and say, no, I would like you, everybody, this is an assignment. Tonight or within the week, go and look at the Gospel of, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21, following. Book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21, following. The person who sins will die. The son will not bear the punishment of the father's iniquity. Nor will the father bear the punishment for the son's iniquity. And I also add that this, the daughter will not bear the punishment of the mother's iniquity. Neither will the mother bear the daughter's punishment of her own sin. The righteousness of the righteous will be upon the righteous. The wickedness of the wicked will be upon the wicked person. Where do you stand? What is your vision? What do you do to avoid going back to your old way of life? This is my assignment to each and every one of us, including I myself. We have to give ourselves that assignment. Because unexamined life is not worth living. If you are driving a car and you don't put gas in it, you will run out of gas and you'll be stuck in the cold weather. What will you do? In every human being, there is that inner oracle called conscience. Your conscience will be telling you, this thing you are trying to say or this thing you are trying to do is not good. Follow your God. Listen to your conscience talk to you. Listen to the scripture talk to you. Sometimes God may send somebody in your way. Listen to good counsel. Don't be carried away by your pomposity. Sin of pride is the worst sin. It may mislead you. So now it is another day, another opportunity for us to reflect on that caption, don't look back. Don't look back to things that puncture your time. Don't look back. The things that will not help you to heal. Take a deep breath and breathe out. What is that thing that is holding you back from family peace? Ask yourself, what is that material thing? God will give you something more than that one that has been holding you back. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever that is holding you back, that you can move forward, don't give that in that power 
to hold you to ransom. You have to free yourself. You have to free your family. You have to free your friends and neighbors. You have to free your co-workers. Extend friendship hand to many people. Do not hold back. Do not look back to things that will destroy you. Crush all negative thoughts that pull you back. My dear brothers and sisters, tonight is a wonderful night for us. After the fall season, there is spring. And if you look around, you see the trees are changing colors. And the green grasses are coming back. Why would you like to remain on the fall season? Why God has given us the clue of the spring to come, and we are now in the springtime? Will you be able to spring up and enter into the divine blessing? Or will you be able to fall back to the satanic energy of anger? What are you expecting in the future? What are your anticipations? What is your own goal and vision? And what is your spiritual goal objective? The students, they have their curriculum. What is your spiritual curriculum? We have to look into all this. We have to integrate what we have read in this life into our spiritual life. Because we are made up of body and soul. The spiritual and the physical. play a important role in our spiritual life and physical life. We are embodiment of all this. But our culture, but our behavior and attitudes and so on. So whatever that makes you to walk into divine glory, keep it on. Don't be in the Etabokin realm. Be in the Shekinah glory. Don't remain with Etabok. Go into the Shekinah with the Lord. Don't remain an Etabok. Go into the Shekinah glory of God. And tap into the divinity of God. And look at the Trinity. Forward never. Backward never. Look unto Jesus. Look unto the cross of Jesus. Remember when Peter was walking on the sea. And all of a sudden he found himself drowning. He, he stretched out his hand and said, Father, God, Jesus, Jesus. Trust me. And Jesus was able to save him. Tonight we are releasing that blessing hands upon you. Go into prayer. Whatever be your worry, whatever that has been pulling you back, go into prayer now. God is visiting that situation in your life now. God is trying to rescue you. All you need to do is to open your spiritual heart. Don't tear your garment, tear your heart. Take in the breath, child of God. You will receive the chill of divine blessing tonight. That spark of the divine is coming upon you. Because God is releasing that spiritual synergy upon you tonight. That will able to encapsulate your being for God. You are not alone, child of God. You are not alone in this problem. Your brothers and sisters all over the world are suffering the same face. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Take him deep breath and breathe out. Don't go back to what pulled you down. There was a man I know that used to be rich. And all of a sudden, he lost his job. His 
sold his house. He sold his house. It's not easy for one to sell his or her own house. He cut his, his coat according to his size. He called me on the phone, Father so said, Father, you will not believe this. Me of all people, me of all people is now begging. Nobody will believe me. I said, I know what you're going through. I believe in God, but I don't want to believe in any other thing. But I, I can imagine what you're feeling. I can understand what you're going through. He said, Father, what will I do? I said, what do you think? What is coming into your mind? He said, Father, I'm considering selling my house. And what will you do when you sell your house? I'll look for a, a condo or studio and start life afresh. I said, let's put it into prayer. I, I prayed with him. He said, Father, after praying with you on the line, I was able to shed my beers. He was in the house planning to kill himself. You don't even know what God has done for you, the child of God, that you are alive and breathing. Don't kill yourself, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't eat what's nothing to do that. Jesus died for our sake. Who are you dying for? It's a kind of sickness that needs to reach out in prayer. Seek for professional counseling. Don't bottle yourself inside that house. You need a professional counselor. Don't shy away from going, from reaching out for counseling. Go and look for professionals. You take care of your car. Why wouldn't you take care of yourself? You take care of your house. Why wouldn't you take care of your health? Many people don't go for checkup. Annual checkups. These are the four things I want you to do. Don't go back to your old ways of procrastination. Oh, I'll do it later. Don't go back to those things. Those things are pulling you down. Don't go back, child of God. Father, Lord, I thank you for tonight. I did, I did not speak by myself. Your spirit did everything. I am nothing. I am among what is seven. I don't deserve their praise. I thank you, Jesus. Day by day, for making you your divine instrument. Many in this life are going through a lot. I pray for your divine assistance. I pray for your divine arrangement to visit them, O Lord. Many have come back from surgery. Oh, Father, I pray. That if they are looking for the fruit of the womb, Father, I pray that you minister to them, that they will be able to receive their own child, fruit of the womb, blessed. In the name of God, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, I bless all pregnant, all barren women. You are not barren in the name of Jesus. Don't call yourself barren. There is hope. Even those people that are adopted other people's child, the child is yours. You are no longer barren too. That child belongs to you. After all, each and every one of us, we are adopted children of God by virtue of our baptism. I thank you for adopting those children to fill in the gap and you have fire for this. If you are waiting for your own child, be strong about it. Your own will come in the mighty name of Jesus. All you have to do in every situation is ask God, what are you telling me in all this situation? Father, Lord, minister, whisper your 
your will upon your children. May they be able to understand your will. May they be able to understand your divine wisdom. Because you are unfathomable, Lord. We cannot read the handwriting on the wall sometimes. Even when your children receive messages in the dream that can't even interpret it. Even when they receive visions, O Lord, they can't understand you. We need Daniel in our own time to interpret the dreams and visions of your people. Father, Lord, I pray for your divine grace. Father, Lord, I pray for your divine intervention in various families. Father, Lord, as we are planning for for our convention this year, oh, Father, may many people be edified in the mighty name of Jesus. As we are enjoying the new month, oh, Father, renew us. Revive us. Nourish us with your spiritual strength, O Lord. Rekindle the fire of your love in our families. Many families lack love. Father, let your love arrest them in Jesus' name. Many families lack peace. Let the peace of the risen Lord flow. In the mighty name of Jesus. What a family. What a beautiful family you have given us. And there is no peace. No serenity. Oh Father. I lament upon this family. In your name. I pray. That you render your divine peace upon them one by one. That they will experience your divine presence. I pray for your divine healing upon the sick. That you will be able to touch them once again as you are able to rebuke that fever upon the parents in law. In the same way, rebuke that tumor in that family. Remove, rebuke that tumor in the body of my brother and sister in Jesus' name. I pray that you crush that fibroid in Jesus' name. Father Lord, I pray that you render your divine blessing upon them. Father Lord, I pray that you remove that poison in the, in the life of my sisters and my brothers. Wherever the enemies are putting their in, are plotting and plotting in incantation and libations, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Because you said in Gospel of John chapter 23 that you shall receive your spirits of resurrection. Whatever we cast and bind on earth is cast and bind in heaven. And so, Father, by the power bestowed upon me as a Catholic priest, I rescue my children from all perspectives and power in the mighty name of Jesus. I beg that you can change in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I beg that you of the enemy in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I anoint them with the oil of glory. I plant that oil of glory upon you. Your stars will be shining in the mighty name of Jesus. Your destiny will be established in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, whatever set their clock back, no, their clock will not be anti-clockwise. It will be clockwise always. Father, Lord, I pray that you establish them. Let them not lose hope those that are looking for the fruit of the womb. Let them not lose hope those that are looking for their papers. Oh, Father, I pray that those that are looking for job will get it. Many people have been taking exams and they have not succeeded. Father, Lord, you are full of wealth. I bless them with the book of wisdom, chapter 9, from verse 1 to 11. That will be your, your decree. That will be your creed. Book of wisdom, chapter 9, from verse 1 to 11. All the students, be saying it as your anthem. I pray that God will answer your prayers, that you'll be able to have divine breakthrough in your exams. For the Lord, I pray for all of us on this line, that your divine blessing will come upon us. For divine arrangements, once again. For divine bond with us. Bond with us. Bind us together. Never allow us to go away. Hold on me, O Lord. Don't let me go astray. Hold on me, O Lord. 
Don't let me go. <laughs> Hold up on my children, Lord. Never let them go astray, Lord. Hold on them, Lord. Don't let them go astray. Never let them go back to their old life. Never let them go to their satanic world. Oh, Father, Lord, supply their needs, Lord. Supply their needs, Lord. Supply their needs, Lord. Oh, Father, Lord, we believe in you. We trust in you. We believe in you. We trust in you, Father. We believe in you, Jesus Christ. Oh, the Trinity, Lord. Teach us how to live in peace. Oh, oh Father, oh, let my lamentation song come unto you. Let your divine healing come. Let your divine love come. Oh, let your divine peace come. And settle in our family. Abba, Father, I thank you for tonight. Let the chill of your divine blessing come upon your children. Let the chill of your divine blessing come upon them. Let the spark of your divine blessing and spiritual energy come upon them. That they will be able to enjoy the serenity of this month, this May devotion. May our Mother Mary, the Mother of the May devotion, grant you divine intervention to her powerful intercession. May the servant of God serve all of you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, the ancient of days, who give you all the glory, our Lord Jesus, for this wonderful night. What a night. What an amazing night. Father, you are the one who have used the instrument of your Son as an instrument in your hand to bless us with your word. Blessed be your name, Lord. Pray that this word will live in our hearts. We also pray that every virtue that has gone out of him be replenished. Every million times over, O oh God. Bless the woman by his so called hapless breast in the name of Jesus. Amen. I will cover his siblings with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Spread over his ministry. That he shall grow Lord. from strength to strength. Yes, Lord. Father, be with him. May every Lord. soul that you have apportioned to him to bring to you never get lost, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Be thou glorified. Thank you, El Shaddai. For all the ministrations in songs, in the different music outfit programs. May you anoint his voice to bring healing to those who are desolate in life. In the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Father, as he has been watering us with your word, may he also be watered. May his well never run dry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.